Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. Got Liz on the West Coast. Hey, Liz. Hey, y'all. And we've got a really awesome treat. Karina Neff of uh, Maxi Maids and name your commercial division is? MGN Commercial Services. Thank you. <laughs> um, she's got a very diversified business and she's going to tell us how she got there and give us some, some hints and tips that uh, may inspire some of us to, uh, to do the same thing. But uh, before we jump into that, we're going to do a little housekeeping that I should have done Friday, but somehow it just didn't happen. I just put him off, y'all. <laughs> I said, hey, it's time to go. Let's all relax. I wanted to get out of the heat. That was the problem. Oh, dear God. You, Karina, <laughs> were, you here, were you here Friday? No. We almost had a medical emergency. Liz was, was like... <laughs> in her car trying to do this on her phone. Oh my gosh. And I think, I, I don't know, I think the like the, the heat index was what, like 120 or something? I don't know. It was hot enough that my phone turned off. I said, nope, it's too hot. Can I ask you a question? Does your, does your air conditioning in your automobile work? It does, but remember there was something wrong with the, the volume on my phone, so I couldn't hear you guys and run the air conditioning. That's true. That was the problem, I That's know for the show. Good for you. We won't be doing that again. Yeah, I won't be doing that again. It was a yeah. one-time only. And, and, and we had uh, Olympia Washington, um, you know, um, emergency uh, response like on speed dial with her address just... And one time she went blank and we thought, oh my God, that's it. You know, let's, let's dial 911. Well, because my phone literally turned off. And then I couldn't get it to turn back on. And uh, boy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, story. here we go. Here's the here's what we didn't get to because Liz was <laughs> wanting off the phone now. <laughs> Take us through this. What are we going to be doing this week? All right. So this week is uh, I, I, I love this week. So uh, first off, we have Karina here um, diversifying your service portfolio because she does both and in a really big way. So Karina's company has been around for a long time. You guys know that she is, uh, what's your official RC convention title, Karina? I am the chairwoman for the com committee. The chairwoman for the committee. Okay, so she's getting everything running for us, you guys. She's still working hard at putting together the, um, the convention schedule. And you know, everybody, we're all like fingers crossed, right? But yeah. you'd never be able to tell if you saw how Karina's just like grinding it out. So, I mean, I really love that too. Uh, tomorrow we have part two with Alonzo, Racism in America, three things that you can do. So we want to help people to recognize, yes, there is racism in America and how can we be, you know, how can we be part of some, some solution? How can we do something? How can we be helpful and not just all keep feeling like, Ah, so if I'm you, really looking forward to that. If you missed us last Tuesday, we, we started this discussion and we talked a lot about history and kind of the how did it happen and why are we here? So we kind of set the stage and now the next step is now that now that we have a better understanding, what are we going to do? So I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Me too. Uh, and then we have Chris Willett. Chris is in Colorado. And he has um, been switching over his company from teams to solos. And he's got a lot of reasoning about why he's been doing this. And um, he, he, he's just got a lot of insight into what's going on between the differences between teams and solos. And I thought it would be really interesting to have him on and talk with us about that stuff because I hear from people all the time, people that are solos that want to switch to teams, people that are teams wanting to switch their solos or large teams to small teams. And he just has a lot of insight in this this arena. So do you have something to say, Tom, about that? Yeah, but before, yeah. you, before you move on, uh, Amber has a, has a comment. She says, nice haircut, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Amber. Good job. Tom always feels like he gets left out of the hair conversation. Yeah. So good was, job. Way to go. And I was complaining to Liz earlier today that it just won't act right. And um, you gave me some consolation that it's just not 
used to being short anymore. So right, it'll be fine. It looks I'm fine. Gonna have to work. Well, our, one of our other partners was telling him he needed to put mousse and product in his hair. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, you don't. Your hair will be fine. It looks. Oh, fine. I can go product. I can rock product, but I just you know I need to have a reason. No, you don't. You don't need to. You look fine. I think so. Thank you, Amber. You, you're on my side that says he doesn't need anything in his hair. Uh, okay, so. I don't know if a lot of people know Chris or not, but Chris is like a petroleum engineer and he's really smart and very analytic. And we like those analytic people. Um, if you guys don't know Chris, you're going to really want to catch him on Wednesday too. He's one of my favorites. He's a uh, one of our foundation's uh, graduates as well, alum. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, he's a cool guy. You're going to want to hear what he has to say. Uh, on Thursday, we have Bill Gelderman. And I think a lot of you deal with Bill. He does. Oh, what's the name of the number one thing that he. Oh, my goodness. Orion. Thank the you. Orion. Tom. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. He he um he sells the Orion and he believes in the Orion. He helps coach people on the Orion, but also disc. And he uh, has just a wealth of knowledge around hiring really good people and how to how to make that happen and getting rid of the bad people before they mess you up. Hey, Debbie. So so uh, and then, Orion for you guys that don't know, it's an assessment. I think it's like maybe 50 questions, give or take. I mean, Bill will give you the skinny on all of this on Thursday, but it uh, helps identify characteristics and tendencies in people if they have any uh, proclivity to, to steal or to do drugs or to not follow safety procedures or bad customer service habits. It, and all this stuff was like scientifically you know, statistically normalized, and there's lots of statistical data that, that 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 substantiates that there's what they call efficacy in these tests. That they actually give useful insight. And Bill's a really funny guy. He's been a friend of ours for a long time. Love Bill. Yay! Uh, yeah, I, I love Bill too. He's he's awesome. You guys are gonna love him. And then um, Friday, we have our surprise guest. And I'll just tell you that she is one of my favorite people. Um, she has been in the business quite a long time. And she is a rock star name that you will all have heard of. Oh, nice. I, I have lots of, look at all that good stuff I gave. On that I, can't one. Wait, I can't wait to find out who it is. <laughs> did you forget already? <laughs> uh, did, I, did I ever know? So, um, yeah, you know. Okay. Billy Goose. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if you can guess by the end of the week, Tom. Huh? <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. All righty. So we took care of that. And um, Anything much happened over the weekend as it pertains to small business administration, PPP, any of that good stuff? I didn't see anything new, but I did have somebody ask me, Tom, about, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now, where we had delivered some info. Let's see, what was it? We had delivered some information about the new findings were around that it is mostly airborne, that it is most communicable by um, air, not by things that you touch. Do you remember that information? Remember yeah, we we've, got got, that? we've got a number of uh, articles that are on the um, resource page in the blogger out of some Northern University. <sighs> Um, yeah. His name is 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 Aaron, right? Yeah. And yeah, uh, I thought it was a girl. Yeah. There's 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 a bunch of information on there. Although over the last couple of days, yeah, that reminds me, there's been reports coming out of China that they're making claims that it's being transferred in food products, like salmon coming out of Europe, and now they're looking at chicken processing and. Oh, wow. 
most of most of the um, you know authoritative voices in the Western world, you know, U.S. and and and, and Europe are shaking their heads. There's no empirical evidence that there's any basis for that, but um, it's got some people looking at it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be watching it and, and waiting and seeing, but but there's 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 a lot of doubt that there's there's anything to that. But they've uh, they're 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 picking up uh, the, the the rhythm on on expressing that concern about uh, how you know food processing plants and so on and so forth are are sharing the virus through through sick workers in particular handling food and it's being conveyed on food again wow okay well you you keep an eye out tom let us know if this becomes a real thing i'm on it right if it's if it's an actual concern all right we're not going to worry about it until then um maybe a second round of ppp marcia is saying um yeah i had heard that a maybe thing but i hadn't heard more than that did you guys hear something more is it some a more legitimate thing say it again so it would be the third round right because it's it was already first and second round it would be the third round of ppps i think they were meaning a second round like everybody who got ppp money already would maybe be getting a second round of if ppp you, money if you spent your initial tranche of ppp money you could go back and ask for more maybe but more okay. yeah um, Just change the second round of PPP, Sarah. She's like, I'm in. <laughs> it, seems, it, seems like consensus, it seems like the consensus out of DC is that they're going to need to do more to help small business and just to help the economy in general. Yeah. Um, help help unemployed, you know, people that are they're unemployed. They're talking about taking the $600 a week uh, that expires at the end of July and doing something additional after that. What that looks like exactly is still still trying to be, uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion around that. It's a lot of discussion about needing to put more money into uh, local and state governments. That's a lot of cities that need money. I mean, they're, they're nowhere near done printing money and handing it out. Oh, yeah. Just, I, mean, just don't don't have enough. Right? I mean, that's right. Where they print all the money. I should go to knock on the door and tell them we need more. Yeah. Sure <laughs> I like that, Karina. Knock, knock. <laughs> yeah. so, Karina. If it works, could you tell them I need some too? I yeah. will. Yes. I'll just, just in case. <laughs> share the wealth, share the wealth. So, so Karina, right. your, your, your business is located in Northern Virginia. Yeah, so we are um, about 15 miles from the White House, and it's Northern Virginia, but metropolitan area, which means D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, so, yeah, so those are the three regions we service. And uh, how long have you guys been in business? So my mother started the business, which is Maxi Mates, in 1989. And um, after I completed my degree in public relations, I went on to work for a PR firm in, in D.C. And I did a lot of um, proposals and government contracting work. And then in 2013, 2011, 2012, I came on and I was doing some consulting work for my mom. And then I decided to come on board full time in about 2013. She retired and I took over the brand completely. But my goal always was to um, to really strengthen our commercial ties because of so much opportunities that we have in this area and all of the different um, opportunities that, that women in business have and minority in business have in this area specific, specifically. So we set out to do that and we've been, it was a long road, but it looks like we're, we're getting some real traction and well, how much you know, of your business is now commercial? So yeah, so we started about 80-20 um, when I joined on. And then this last October, I really, I was like laser focused on business development. And January, I landed two large, fairly large contracts. So right now it's about 50-50 is commercial and 50 is residential. Nice. 
How did you land the contracts, Karina? What What are you doing? Is this yeah like because you're pushing on this or you know, can you tell us more about that? So a lot of the things that I do are are specific to the um, charities I'm um, associated with an association. So the Hispanic communities community here has a lot of nonprofit organizations um, and different networking groups within those organizations. And I started to network and to really build uh, relationships with people and to get out there and to everything in, in the commercial space is who you know and the relationships that you have. And so we were planting seeds and planting seeds um, and then it just started to develop and open doors. And so I always struggled with knowing the numbers of the commercial space because the residential is so different and I never really grasped that. And then, like I said, in October, I just kind of like dove in head first and I really got to understand better what the commercial industry was like thanks to ISSA and ARCSI, all of the um, people that I was connected with, Alonzo, RJ, they all started to kind of mentor me and help me. And then it kind of just, it was just like one of those things, like one door opens and then they all open. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like that's always the way it is. Yeah, yes. So how much um, do you think that your PR background has helped you, Karina? How much do you use it in the business? So I think for me, I am very focused on the way that we um, that we present ourselves, right? Not just for the Maxi Mates brand, but for the MGN brand. So I would say the majority of my um, my my role as a leader has always been PR focused. And I'll give you an example. We have our core values for MGN are innovate, invest, empower, and educate. And all of that carried out through our entire branding. Um, and one of the very first things I did for Maximates actually was a complete rebranding strategy for every across the board. So to answer your question, PR is incredibly important. The content you're making, the logo, the look, the color, everything, it's the entire image is incredibly important. Do you find that to be true for the commercial as well as the residential? You know, that's a great question because the commercial space is very different. Um, and I am using our PR spin, um, kind of like a unique selling proposition because I'm trying to disrupt the, the the industry in that way because we're trying, we and Max, we made, we're a high end brand. So we service a lot of Colorama Road um, residents. And that approach, that five-star approach, I've now transitioned it into the commercial, which you generally don't see. And so it has helped a lot. And they're thinking, all, the, all the property management companies that, I've, um, that I work with have been pleasantly surprised by that additional um, differentiator of what was a residential, now is a commercial, but you're bringing in that like extra level of service. And it's not anything crazy. It's just like the level of attention that I put on things um, the way that we answer emails, you know, my pleasure to assist you, things like that is, it goes a long, long way. Okay. So you mentioned property managers. So let's, let's drill down just a little bit in terms of what type of commercial we come, we say you know, residential is, is pretty much residential, but commercial can mean so many different things. Yeah. So what, yeah. what type of commercial work are you doing? No, that's a really great question because we, um, so we work with two different couple different ones but for example we work with um, Cushman and Wakefield now Cushman and Wakefield is the property manager in a specific building their tenant is GSA okay and then their sub tenant is the FBI so our day porters are in these buildings and they are servicing FBI but our my actual client is Cushman and Wakefield okay. but I will say that because of that relationship that kind of dynamic it's allowed me to be connected with the government in a different way so I'll, we recently got a um, RFQ a request for a quote from the FBI because we were doing such good work with Cushman and so they approached me directly and said hey would you be interested in doing XYZ and so you as you guys know, getting a sole source or getting something directly from the government is huge and it builds up your portfolio because it builds up past performance. So then when you do try to go to government directly, you can say, hey, I did this before. Mm -hmm. I'm, I 
they have experience. So that's a, such a huge thing. Um, so yeah, so I, I work directly. My client is Cushman is the property management companies, but the tenants are the federal government. So the FDA and FBI. That is awesome. Ooh, the FDA. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of background checks, a lot of security, I yeah. guess a lot of, uh, additional paperwork involved in services yeah. like those. Yes, there's a lot of um, a lot of regulations, rules, uh, clearance associated with these things, um, and some buildings have higher clearance than others. Obviously, they and we've been really blessed in the fact that our employees were had a, had been in those buildings before. So when I took over the contract, they chose to stay in those buildings. So they mm -hmm. already had the clearance. So you got the contract and wound up hiring a lot of the people that worked for the old contractor. Exactly. Exactly. Which is awesome because um, these clearance takes sometimes up to a year to get. Right. Now they already have them. So it was just a transition from one company to the other. And nice for them too. It's easy yeah. for them. Yeah. Because the day quarter are building relationships with the actual tenants, right? They're there with the FBI and FBA every single day, and they like their work environment. They want to stay at the building, so they, yeah. you know, they just would can transfer over to a new management company, basically. I am just checking in on the name of your company, Karina. Is it M G N? Oh wait, hold on. It is. Yep, I saw it. M G N. Yep. Right. Okay, so that's what I put. What does it stand for? So M is the founder, which is Maxi Maids. And then Garcia is my mother's, or my maiden name. <laughs> and then Neff is my last name. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, okay. So people were asking, can you see the comments um, on the right-hand yeah. side, usually, yes. where it says live comments? Yes, <clears throat> Just so you know, sometimes the people are going to throw out some questions for you. Yeah, if you guys have any questions for Karina, let us know. Um, I had another question, and now I, I put myself on a whole different track here. Well, well, Friday, we could write it off to the heat, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, boy, Tom, I can come up with an excuse on a dime. Do you really need one? I could give you 10 if you need you're, one. You're looking a lot better today. I'm, I'm not nearly as nervous. <laughs> Yeah, I'm feeling much better inside. Yeah, nice and cool in here. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> Christina Sam says she loves you. Oh, she's so yeah, sweet. nice. Yeah, it, you're awesome. I agree. She's awesome. <laughs> I think we hear that a lot from people too. So that's that is awesome. So can you tell us a little bit, um, Karina, about you? So you decided you were going to do this intentionally. You had this residential business. You decided you wanted to come over to commercial. Um, and, and it sounds like you wanted to do it. Actually, can you tell us a little bit more about what made you think, yeah, I really want to do more commercial. I, I love working nights. I love, um, you know, um, those people that never show up for work at night. And I'm going to have to go in. Yeah, I'm sure that that was all in your mind, right? So, so what Tom said is so true. The commercial that I know is very different than that. So I don't have any night cleanings. It's Monday okay. through Friday from 7 to 4 p.m. So those are the contracts that I chose to pursue. So I don't have those. Well, I'm sure that I, not I'm sure, I know they exist. Um, yeah. We don't have any of those. And so the, the, the thinking behind going out for a commercial contract really was because of the, the enormous amount of growth that it offers. And based on my experience in the PR space, I really wanted to take advantage of the relationship that I had built in the federal government and start answering the RFPs and start going after um, more of the Fed base opportunities. And so that really was, when I, when, as soon as I came on to Maxi Maids, I told my mom that was my goal, was to grow the commercial space um, and really kind of take it from there. The residential, she just set such a great foundation. The work that she did, um, while I run it still, I feel like it was really her baby. And it was, it, it just is everything about that brand, it speaks to her. And so when I got a, when I came on, I really wanted to first 
give the time and, and respect to that to that brand and help it. For instance, when I came on, the platform that they were using, that we were using, which is Service CEO, was Service CEO. They were using it at about 10 percent. So they were just storing the names. <laughs> And they were, you know, printing out the sheets. And so then my goal was to maximize it at 100%. So we started doing batch uh, credit card processing. We do it. We started doing email confirmations, uh, running the route. So and then we got mobile devices. So it was a lot of that at first. Um, then again, I did the rebranding. But so while I while I gave time then, I always knew that my commercial um, passion was Kind of in that in that um i'm on the back burner if you will yeah waiting until you were ready to go so you, you, <laughs> yeah. shared, earlier, you shared earlier that they're like 50 50 in terms of where your your business is now between the commercial and the residential in terms of your time and attention how is that split between those two sides of the business yeah so we had when i was in october i was running the the maxi maids brand with my right hand and she and i were splitting you know 100 50 50 well i was 100 maximum 100 percent of the time but then as the as mgn started to really take off i had to invest much more time into mgn so now i'm so proud of the, everything that she's done and so i've promoted her to the president of maxi maids and i've moved on to run mgn so i check in you know, once a week we do, actually we do uh, weekly calls at 12 o'clock to go over numbers and things like that. But she really is running the brand. Um, so it gives me the opportunity to focus on business development because like I mentioned earlier, the business development in the commercial space from my experience, you plant seeds and it takes a long time to foster into something. So something that I did in January, February probably won't result until july august september so i really have to be deliberate about the business development and constantly be at it so we're really blessed to have those large contracts now but we can't just depend on that we have to keep pushing and keep pushing so i would say probably 90 percent i'm mgn right now and 10 percent maximates okay yeah it's i imagine you appreciate having the residential side of the business if nothing else just for cash flow you know, right. you got the money coming in and, you know, if you lose a residential client, I mean, that's disappointing, but you, you know, you have a hard time finding that in your bank account or on the commercial side, you know, big accounts are great when you get them, but it hurts when you lose them. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're, could not be more right. Yeah. So the, the residential really was such an amazing uh, foundation foundation for us for MGN and it was a rock solid jumping off point. And for a long time, it helped us get to where we were and where we are, right? So all of that cost of equipment that you have to incur, the large equipment that you're buying, you know, the auto scrubbers and the buffers and the burnishers, and the, you know, it's like there's a lot of material or equipment and supplies that you have to purchase. Um, so it definitely helped with that. Um, so yeah, so residential will always be uh, very, very important in this formula. Well, can you can you share, Karina, what what are like your what's your five year goal when we're talking about the number of like how, what's your percentage of the business commercial to residential? What where do you hope to be in five years? Sure. Yeah. So um, in two thousand and so this February, I actually actually split the divisions on completely. So now MGN is completely different entity. And um, so our goal, our first year goal for MGN is $2 million. And then in three years, it's about five and a half. And then five, I think we did five years, $10 million. Um, so we're, it's, it's one of those things that like I, knowing where we started and knowing how far we've come, I kind of have to pinch myself a little bit because We've had so much luck and I don't know if that's luck or if it's the hard work that we've put in, but I feel incredibly lucky. I feel incredibly blessed to have the opportunity to service the clients that we do in the commercial space. And my, I've always wanted to have this large commercial brand. And so I think we're, we're on track for that. 
What's the saying? Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah, I love that. Somehow yeah, yeah. feeling yeah. that uh, you're making your luck. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. I have so much to learn and I, I'm so grateful for um, so many people that I meet along the way that can, I just try to be a sponge um, and absorb as much as I can. And so I, I always try to stay humble too and try to say, you know, I don't know the answer to that, but I'll get it for you and I'll research and I'll figure it out. Like for instance, I had this, um, one of our clients, the floor, got destroyed by a previous vendor and they asked me, you know, the specifics about what kind of floor and this and this and that, and um, how can we fix it? And I said, listen, I'm not a floor expert, but I know somebody that is, and I have this association that I'm a part of, which is ISSA that I can tap into and I can figure it out. So I contacted ISSA and I said, I need help. And Brant put me in touch with Mark, who Mark put me in touch with this person. And then I reached out to the floor manufacturer and I said, listen, I'm having a problem. Can you help me? And they gave me all this data. And then I came back and I presented it in a report form. And they were like, okay, this makes sense. So while I don't know the answer, I could still, I could get it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, you have the contact. So that's, that's a, a, a huge value to people more than just, you don't have to have all of the information in your brain, but as long right. as you can get the information, that makes you a valuable resource for sure. Right. right. So it looks like you are, your plan is to really grow that um, commercial space so that it's going to be the dominant force and, with, with your company. And what are you planning on doing much with residential, just um, growing it at kind of the same rate? Because it's been around for years and years and years. And it takes a lot longer to grow a residential yeah. cleaning business to, to, yeah. to that size. So my mom uh, in 2008, I think it was, she hit that 1 million mark and she, and I wasn't involved in, in that, in this uh, brand at that point, but when she hit it, it was a big deal. And she was just, like I said, her passion's always been the residential space. And so she just guns blaring. But when I came on, I'll be honest with you, I hit that 1.5 and I just couldn't go past it. And I, so I was like, okay, I can do other things. I can do other things. And for me, it, I couldn't go past the 1.5. Um, I think my best year was 1.75, but so I felt like I tapped out at that. Now I will say my area, you have Made Bright, who's doing six million, seven million. You know, it's like they're incredible over there. I mean, uh, they're like made gods. Um, <laughs> I have so many friends are in the, the residential space that are doing one point five, two million dollars, and it's absolutely commendable. So while I, I'm sure there is much more potential for growth for Maxi Maids, for me personally, I felt like I had capped my residential. Um, that's not to say I still don't give it love and we still, you know, do a lot of stuff for our clients and are constantly finding different ways to service them. Um, but for the growth for, and this is now, you know, it may be in five yeah. years, I'll say, let's go give it a go again. Um, but right now I think that I kept for the residential brand. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, I, I guess the reason why I asked that question too, is I just really want everyone to hear that there is, there are so many different ways that you can go in business just because you have set yourself up to do one thing doesn't mean that that has to be your only path forever exactly. you can change paths and sometimes your new path would might even be better than right. than your old path yeah right. and honestly a lot of the the opportunities too in the commercial space i do believe it came for the residential um the residential, our customers were referring us to their uh, property management companies, to the, the amount of contacts that I gained from the residential space was incredible. You know, because we have, we are in DC, a lot of our residents in DC work for the federal government. So they, it's a no brainer for them to say, hey, Karina, I've been working with Karina for five years. Absolutely here. Who do you need? What contracting officer do you need? And all, you know, that's how it really happened. I was in the in the residential space and doors started opening because of the relationships that I build in the re residential space. So I definitely think 
diversifying, we talked about this, Liz, diversifying your portfolio is really important. And for the residential, we do offer so many different types of services um, that I also developed on from laundry to um, in-house uh, uh, managers to the deep detail cleaning, the light or clean. So all of that stuff. And that goes back to PR. The verbiage was really important for that. Um, so I think the residential, I, the commercial wouldn't have existed without residential. It really wouldn't. I wouldn't have been able to jump off without vaccinates. That's a, that's an interesting pivot, if you will. I've heard the word pivot a lot during this unprecedented time. And obviously, you know, you started doing the commercial before for COVID, but you know, we've got a lot of uh, you know people on on this Facebook Live who are in the house cleaning business and are probably asking themselves, what uh, what would be my next step? What would be my next move if I wanted to diversify and get into some form of of, of commercial cleaning? You kind of gave us a hint, leverage the relationships you have with your own, you know, residential clients. Is, are there other, you know, things you've learned that would, would be useful to, to the folks joining us today? Yeah. So number one is don't be intimidated by the commercial space. I think as a residential um, owner or cleaner, you sometimes have this misconception of what commercial is while they are completely different. Different is not bad and different is not um, impossible. So my my first uh, advice would be don't be intimidated by it and ask questions and get to know the industry. Um, two would be the relationships that I've built have been in incredibly powerful. So if you're really looking to build a commercial space, kind of map out what it looks like for you. And something that I, I've done and one of my mentors has helped me do is when you have a prospect list or you have a business development list and you're going through all those people, rate them. So A, B, and C and target your A and be more specific about the people that you're going to talk to and say, okay, these are my A's. These are the people that I know will help me. So if it's Ms. Smith that you are servicing and Ms. Smith works at United Bank or Bank of America and you know that location has 12 branches and you need to find that contact, reach out to Mrs. Smith and say, hi, Mrs. Smith, you know, we're developing this commercial brand and I'm really, I'm hoping that you would connect me with the right person. Nine times out of 10, they're like, oh my gosh, yes, absolutely. Who do you need? What do you, you know, they're excited for you. If you're doing a good job, they're excited for you and they want to help you. That's, uh, so leveraging, leveraging contacts is definitely going to be that second thing. And then you said you did some networking too, right, Karina? Like, yeah. did you do local networking, like BNI or? So what I'm, I'm a part of the Women's Presidents Organization, which is WPO, and the the DC chapter we meet once a month has been incredible. They are the reason, the huge reason too to things that the opportunities that have um, come my way one of the our president and this is kind of how it all happened i think one of the president the president of our, of our chapter she was connected with latina style magazine and they were doing a conference and they were looking for speakers and so they reached out to our chapter and said you know do you know anybody and so my president said oh my gosh yes i do i know karina so from that referral, I got connected with all of those associations. So ASE, Mujeres de ASE, uh, Prospanica, and my network started to grow exponentially. And so my number one, I guess, advice, I feel like I have so many, but um, network and network and network, but really be deliberate about your, your networking. Because I know sometimes when we do network, we get frustrated because we're like, it's an exchange. It's like, here's my card, here's my card, here's my card. And we feel like it's not really intentional and we don't get anything out of it. So think about where you're going. The WPO really resulted for me, um, all of the nonprofit organizations that I'm a part of and that I am, oh, that's another one. So when I started to reach out to these nonprofit organizations, I started to sponsor events for them from Maxi Mates. And sometimes it was $250, other times it's $1,000 depending on the event, but our brand started to get exposure. So any cocktail hour that they were doing, any um, lunch and learn, my brand was out there. And so they constantly would see what was happening. Well, 
the residential may not have gotten the, that customer, those people who work in the government started to see Maximate and started to see the brand constantly popping up. So those sponsorship opportunities, is that something that they were looking to sell or did you initiate that? So the relationships that I built from, from these folks, I started to, they, they had them already. So they would say, we're doing a lunch and learn. Would you want to be a sponsor? Um, and a lot of these things too was my desire to give back to the Hispanic community because I am Peruvian. I really wanted to mentor women, Hispanic women in small business. And I was trying to reach out to organizations that did that or did that in some capacity. And I put that out there. I put that out there in, in that space saying, if you guys need anything, I really want to get involved in my community. And I want to get involved specifically with Hispanic women in business. And so it just started kind of happening. And then I got, you know, an award in July for Hispanica DC, which recognizes Hispanic leaders in DC that are doing just that, are helping the Hispanic community. So through that, yeah, I thanks. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love the idea of being intentional in your networking because networking can be painful. So do you have any other tips or strategies in terms of making it a productive exercise? Um, go alone. I know that what? go alone, go to alone, oh, alone because my very first one, I was really scared. I, I, I may not seem like it, but I, I was very, very nervous because I didn't know what was going to, what they were going to ask me or what they were going to do. And, and the speaking engagement specifically, I pushed myself to that. I'd never done a speaking engagement with over 300 people. Um, I made sure that I, you know, I pushed myself pa well past my comfortable point. Um, <laughs> and I started meeting people and going up to people and talking to them. And I just am not that person. I was never that person. Um, so if you really want to be successful, you have to push yourself well beyond your comfort zone. And you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, and I did that. And, and it really resulted in, because before I would go with, you know, my right hand to these networking events. And we were just talk to each other the whole time. And I'm like, <laughs> not working. Not working. <laughs> comfortable. You need to be uncomfortable about that. Yes. Yes. So a good thank job. You. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that, that, that's actually a great question. So if, if you're not uncomfortable, then, well, maybe you're the kind of person that's very comfortable networking, right? But, and, and that's great too, but you still probably need to push yourself farther and to be doing more than what you're doing. Yes. So whoever you are, right? I need to be doing more than I would normally do. Whatever I'm thinking to myself, yeah, but I just don't want to do that or I don't like to do that. Those are probably things, the mm -hmm. things that, that you should be doing, I should be doing, we should be doing, right? Exactly. Just pushing ourselves. You should surround yourself with like-minded people too. So another you, thing that I heard from you, I, oh, I'm sorry, Tom. Did you have something real quick? I was going to go okay. in a direction. You go. I, I, well, I'm, I'm kind of going a little bit direct, a different direction, but also kind of the same. So talking a lot about networking. You're also talking about um, um, like women-owned businesses and trying to help women. And earlier you were talking about some of your mentors who are men. Right. Yeah. So RJ and Alonzo. And so how all of this stuff all ties together is kind of interesting to me. You're you're getting information from men about how to grow this women owned kind of idea. How, mm -hmm. how did how did that all come about? Did you just yeah. see an opportunity or what happened there? The. The women that I have surrounded myself with and put my have kind of forced formed this circle of um, woman power. I don't know. It's just it's very it's a unique situation because we all are in different industries. So there's lawyers, there's accountants, there's government contracting, there's IT, there's HR. We've been just so incredibly um, supportive of each other. So those. Those, well, everything I think I believe started there, they encouraged me to get out of my comfort zone. And one of the things I remember, I saw the, um, the because of my desire to give back and my desire to help others has always been a driving force. I remember seeing the 
email about ARCSI looking for new council members. And again, I was really, I would never have done this two, three years ago. Karina would never have even thought of this, but I emailed Alonzo directly and I called him and I said, I'm going to apply and I want to be included. And he was like, who, who are you? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> Where'd you come from? Um, so I, I forced myself into that situation and I said, I'm not, you know, I, I know I can help people and I want to help people and I am genuine. So give me this opportunity. And so that relationship started forming organically because I started to really push myself and say, Hey, what can I do? How can we do it? And my energy for anything that's ARCSI, like I, I generally care for others and I generally want to see other women and, and even men succeed in this space. Um, so that was really a, a, a huge point. Alonzo and I's relationship has developed the last six or seven months. And I'll call him and I'll ask him a lot of things. And he probably is like, did I decline? Um, just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> he's been really great. RJ has been really great. The relationships that I've formed through that committee has been really great. Liz, I've met you and I've connected with you in a foreign relationship because of that as well. So it's been such an incredible opportunity for me. Um, but again, I had to push myself and I had to get uncomfortable and I, and it wasn't fun at first, but it worked out. Well, and I really like what you're saying too, is you reach out to people that you thought could be helpful to you, that you could help get you where you wanted to go. First, you decided what you wanted, how you were going to get it. And then you just reached out to those people and you didn't really worry yourself with, whether or not you're gonna get shut down or whether you just didn't worry about that stuff. You just reached out. And I mean, I think Artsy is a great example of how, you know, people are always, businesses, business owners want to help other business owners and build each other up. And there's not really a lot to be afraid of within our industry. Our, right. The people are so, uplifting yeah i'm yeah. sure every once in a while you're going to run into somebody that's not going to have time for you or whatever right but they're going to be few and far between so right. just making yourself do it i mean i think it's excellent advice i'm wondering from the people that are uh watching this facebook live how many of you are thinking right now i couldn't do that i couldn't do that because karina couldn't do it either you know two years ago <laughs> but she did anyway yeah and I guess that you do it and you find out that it wasn't as bad as you thought it would be, it gets a little bit easier. Exactly. It does. And and don't get me wrong, there's times where I have put myself out there and it didn't work. And it was like a oh, that wasn't fun. Um, but no one's gonna give you anything. No one's gonna hand you a business and it it just doesn't work that way. So if you want something, you have to go get it. You have to be bold. But isn't that just another level of growth getting to the point where you understand I do something. If it doesn't work, I can survive that too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We had this situation where I had um, gotten the opportunity to bid on, on $34 million contract. And this was uh, Mark. Uh, no, February, March. And so you can imagine I was like, um, hell, what do I do? You know, I, I've never played this. You know, I so I started to reach out to my network and I started to um, see if we could do like a joint venture with not joint venture, a, a, a teaming agreement. So this massive proposal, this was like a few 34 walkthroughs. Um, it was just like it, it was over eight million square feet. It's a huge portfolio. Long story short, I um, maybe four days before the proposal was due, my then partner, the person that the company that I chose to partner with decided to, it wasn't gonna work. They wanted to walk out. So I was like, oh my God. And they didn't wanna give me all of the price. We had divided the proposal because I'm so good at writing. I was gonna write and they were gonna do the pricing sheet. So I was left with no pricing sheet. So I had to do all the pricing sheet. So I rallied, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. I reached out to my network trying to find another partner. One came in, that fell through. Another came in, that fell This is now 24 hours before I'm supposed to submit this thing. And oh, I'm like, wow. 
gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Should I just fold? Should I just say like, I'm sorry, I, I don't know what to do. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do it by myself. And it is what it is. So I submitted, I drove out and you had to do a written proposal. You had to do copies. It was due at 430. And I stayed up until probably 6 a.m. the night before writing this thing out, doing the pricing. I turned it in at 425. It's due at 430. Oh, gosh. And then I have to get in front of a room of about 12 people and present this proposal. And at that point, I was like, okay, this is, this is the stuff that makes you, right? This is like... I got to do it. So I got up and I presented it and I was by myself and they looked at me and they're like, uh, you missing someone? I was like, no, just me, just me. And they're like, okay, all right. And I did it. And that contract actually, they postponed everything because of the coronavirus stuff. But it was one of those, like, I cannot believe I just did that. Like that. Has so that contract not been awarded yet? No, it hasn't. So you're still a candidate. Yeah, I'm still a candidate for that. Yeah. You know, wow. I, I, I tell people, you know, people ask you, how do I get large contracts? How do I win large contracts? And it's like, well, you have to start by bidding and losing large contracts. Right. And the more you do that, the closer you're getting to winning large mm -hmm. contracts. Right. So you mentioned COVID kind of derailed that or, or, or postponed it. That was my question i'm wondering how the whole pandemic has affected your business what what challenges what opportunities has your business on both sides of the equation retail and commercial how have things changed over the last few months in the residential space we were hit you know pretty hard so we had about 60 percent revenue loss because of this whole thing slowly we're climbing back up but the numbers still aren't great um better but not great uh the commercial space is completely different so while we have those set contracts so we have day porters in all those buildings they're now asking for additional services and um increased services uh and so now what's happening is the tenants there's another property management company that i work with that has various tenants in these buildings so a doctor's office, a dentist's office, various different people. So their tenants have actually started to approach us and ask for disinfecting services. So our portfolio is even is growing more in that sense. Um, we have always been, I've always been really conscious of our employees. And like I said, our core values for MGN have always been to empower, invest, and innovate, and uh, educate. And so when this whole thing happened, I really wanted to take the opportunity to make sure that the employees were protected and they were safe and that we were polishing up all of our procedures and protocols that we made sure we knew what we were doing. Right. And so everybody was safe. I had to pull uh, employees that were over the age of 65. That was a hard conversation for them because they thought that they were losing their job, but it wasn't the case. I, we still paid them. I just chose to take them out of those buildings and have them stay home for their safety. Um, so that was a very hard situation because it, it was my decision to do that. Now looking back, I think I made the right decision um, because now that employee has, he has more trust in me, right? He, he I told him he was not gonna lose his job and he didn't, he now is back again. Um, what else? The the COVID nineteen now we're seeing a completely different shift in re-entering the workspace and what that looks like for everybody. What we're doing, uh, the modification of scope of work for COVID nineteen, um, a much more in there's so much more interest in the details behind commercial. So what products you're using, what equipment you're using, how often are you disinfecting? Um, the employees that are there, are they sick? You know, so there's a lot more involvement with property management companies just to make sure that everybody is safe, everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Awesome. Question? Uh, <laughs> we are getting close to the top of the hour and our commitment of trying to keep the trains running on time. Want to 
show you guys cleaning business today. If you haven't subscribed over here to the right, really easy email, first name, last name, mm -hmm. doesn't cost you anything. You get our newsletter, keeps you up to date on all of the uh, breaking developments uh, in the uh, house cleaning space. If you go to coronavirus.downloads, here are a lot of the downloads, resources, articles that we've had over, I guess, since we've been fighting the crisis during this unprecedented event. I'll care. I just don't count. Uh, Two for one there, Tom. Here's our friend, Aaron Brown, which I think Liz, you were asking earlier. Yeah. And this guy has an awesome blog and he talks about uh, the coronavirus in a lot of different ways, but um, he does a lot of research and he lists all of his reference material in this article, but explains how the disease is spread and is primarily an airborne thing and you have to uh, get a rather significant dose of it over of of an extended period of time. That's why uh, being outside, you're, you're, you're fairly safe. It's, it's a good article. If you haven't uh, read that, please do. Modern Cleaning PHC course, class seven is now live. It's a epic class mm -hmm. on <laughs> tools and very comprehensive. We're, we're, I'm particularly proud of that class out of the whole program. Um, final exam will, will be launched within the next 24 hours and we're going to be done with, with that phase of the project. Yeah. So for everybody who signed up and got their people involved, please uh, go ahead and jump in and, and, and have at it. There's uh, a lot of fun to be had there. I did want to have about oh, the cleaning business tonight when I was doing my research and stuff and any question that I have or I do always go there I try to go there and see if I can find my answer and it somehow always there's something there that can help me so definitely a resource as well that I use often so oh thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much Tom, um, did you did you post the super secret link <laughs> no could you? I mean, I'm doing it every day for. I, I feel like because people think that they can just go to any Facebook Live and get it, they're going to pop up this one and they're going to be like, it's not oh. there. My bad. I'm getting, I'm getting it. It's not there. Yeah. And it's only Monday. My gosh, where do you think we're going to be by the end of the week? <laughs> yeah. It's going to be better, Tom. We're, we're trying so, to pick a game uh, up on smart business moves. Yeah. I mean, oh, no. I feel like. I feel like Karina, you really just upped our game a lot right here. Um, I really did not um, intend that you would be so inspirational. I mean, I know that you're an inspiration <laughs> because of what you do. We're okay with that, though. That's good. <laughs> but I, I, I'm sure that the people on this call are feeling very much inspired. Like, wow, okay, because. You you really made something that is so big that make a lot of people feel like I could never do that. I can't do that. Feel like you, you can do it. You just have to do the hard stuff. Yes. The stuff that you think is too hard. It's not too hard. You just got to do it. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. That was really really inspirational. Uh, I I really uh, appreciate that whole message. I know a lot of people. You know, when you're talking to them, it's, you know what you have to do, but then you don't do it. Right. And really, that, that's the key right there, doing the things that you know you should do. Yeah, and, some, and sometimes it's, we can all do it. I truly believe that. You have to push yourself. And it, sometimes I had this really, um, I had a big fear about the commercial space. I was very hesitant, not hesitant because I always wanted to, but I was fearful that I wouldn't know 90% of the things. And I don't know still a lot of stuff, but I can learn it and I'm not scared of it anymore. And I have a network that will help me get the right answers. So I, if you're, if there's anyone that's really list thinking like, oh, you know, I wish I could do the course, you can do it. You really can. You just have to start. And yeah. you know, that's really huge. You don't have to pretend you know stuff that you don't know. Just explain that, you know, I've got people who specialize in that and I'll get you an answer. And, you know, I'm the talent that 
kind of keeps everything tied together. That's exactly. you know, I don't have any answers, but I've got a bunch of people that do. Yeah, exactly. I'm hanging around with smart folk. Uh, yeah. That's my MO. Yeah. And I'm glad that I'm going to add you to that list, Karina, because you definitely are a talent. We appreciate you uh, being with us today, and hopefully you'll uh, be coming back in the not too distant future. This was yes. fun. Thanks so much. So, and, uh, also add really quickly. I'm so excited about the Alonzo show tomorrow. I was on last week and I caught that one. It was awesome. I really appreciated how you guys were so honest and vulnerable and you guys, you you could tell that you were trying so hard to be respectful, but you also wanted to share stuff and it just came across so sincere and so genuine. And so from a place of you really wanting to learn. So I, I loved it. I applaud you both for that. And I'm so excited to do it to watch tomorrow. Thanks so Yay, much. Thank you. Yeah, please. That. If uh, if at all possible, um, try to join us tomorrow at five. We're doing something important, and it's uh, for a lot of reasons. It's it's for all of our benefit, and um, we'll be taking questions, and um, it's going to be awesome. So, Karina, thank you again. You guys you. Uh, have a good uh, rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow at five Eastern. Yes. Thank Bye -bye. you so much, Karina. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye.